Uh, let's move on to streaming, where I think the biggest competition that Nope had came in the form of a $200 million Netflix movie, and one that also saw one of the biggest stars in Hollywood return to the screen for the first time in, like, what was it? Has it been five years since we got our last Ryan Gosling movie? Did we get one recently? I mean... I, I didn't see a whole lot of it. I, saw, um, I heard he made a Skittles commercial this past weekend <laughs> and attached it to a very long movie. But uh, in terms of a movie star, Ryan Gosling, I, I'm waiting on Barbie for that one. This was a joke. I did not think you could get worse than Red Notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, my my sort of feeling, at least given the co- the comparison of Red Notice, which feels like the right comparison, right? These are these hugely expensive movie star action vehicles and attempts by Netflix to start their own version of like a blockbuster franchise. But both of them just end up feeling a bit soulless it is I think the, the easiest way to describe it. Like I'm, I'm not sure that there is any passion at any point beyond this project, beyond just like trying to get a paycheck. And at least Red Notice has the courtesy of being like attempting to be entertaining in the form of, of quips and silly things happening. This I just found to be really like one note and personality list. And I, I don't know if I feel completely entitled to my review because I, I did fell asleep during it. But I think that also speaks to the lack of quality that something that cost this much money is not able to hold my attention. Yeah, I, I don't, like it's such a boring movie. There's nothing yeah. to add to it, dude. In Red Notice, at least it's Ryan Gosling doing that Ryan Gosling thing again. Oh, I'd rather be annoyed of an actor doing his acting bit than to see Ryan Gosling say lines it sounds like he doesn't even want to say. We've seen uh, Chris Evans play a bad guy in Knives Out. What's he doing here? It was like every single piece of his dialogue is I am bad guy. Yeah. Do you have mustache to twirl? Just say it with some more pizzazz. You know that I'm a sucker for Ana de Armas because I had nothing bad to say about her, but it's mm-hmm. not like she's given anything good. Uh, I Yeah, no, there is nothing redeemable in this movie that makes it worth that price tag because that's really all that they're flaunting. Um, and it sucks because how do you go from the Russo brothers directing what is the biggest movie of all time with Endgame and then coming in here and not being able to create something from... Is this a? Oh, that's right. This is a an adaptation. This is a novel yeah. that originally Chris McQuarrie wanted to adapt, and it fell through. Mm-hmm. So he's like, "Fine, I'm just gonna take my favorite moments from this book and adapt it to a little movie called Ro- uh, Mission Impossible Fallout." Yeah. When you compare the Fallout uh, Halo sequence where they actually jump out of the sky, and you realize, oh, he was inspired by this book. Well, let me see what the Russo brothers do for their adaptation. <laughs> It is. It has to be the worst action editing I have seen in a minute. Mm-hmm. None of it feels real. It all feels fake as can be. Yeah. You know, none of these actors were there with the second unit. Where did the money go? <laughs> what was the point of it? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm really questioning that because it's not a movie How'd that you fall looks... asleep and not miss anything. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. It's not a movie that looks particularly good. It's not a movie that like was particularly impressive with its visuals. It tries to do some of that like weird drone cinematography, completely worse than Ambulance did earlier this year. Just pales in comparison. Um, I don't know, man. Do we have to have a serious talk about the Russo brothers? Like, they are legends in TV, directing the pilot for Arrested Development, one of the great comedy pilots of all time, uh, directing the pilot for Community, and and putting Community on the path to being one of the most visually compelling comedy shows of all time on TV. Like, these guys are legitimately amazing when it comes to half-hour comedies and and baffling Back to TV. when it comes to their feature film work, especially outside of the MCU where they don't have like iconic characters to hold them up. I mean, y- you said they went from Endgame to this. Have- they didn't go straight. There, there was a little stop at Chirk along the way. That is true. 
Uh, what is it with them taking the superheroes that brought them like their biggest <laughs> movie and then going like, what if Spider Man was a drug addict? <laughs> what What if Captain America had was a, a mustache? Opposite? <laughs> yeah. What if it wasn't America's ass, but America's asshole? <laughs> it makes no sense whatsoever. I, I feel bad because if you were actually a fan of the Gray Man, you could have gotten a better adaptation. But then at that point, just go see those sequences in Mission Impossible. Uh, I. I'm glad I didn't have to see this in theaters, but holy moly, does it look terrible on your screens. Yeah. Netflix, y'all said you weren't going to do 200 mil projects no more. Should have capped it with this one. <laughs> right. The Gray Man. Said that too on Netflix. late. And we were just having this discussion. Zach, what do you give this movie? What would you give it from what you saw? Say you were rating it. I mean, I was probably going to go like two or one and a half, but I I don't know if I want to say that without what actually watching it. How? But how many more two stars can I add to my letterbox? I was trying to tell you this. These two star movies, they pop out everywhere. Uh, I'm about to plug it in later. But The Gray Man, streaming on Netflix. Leave it there.